In our lecture today, I will talk about built-up members. Built-up members are basically the elements which are built by connecting simple shapes together. Okay? But before talking about the built-up members, I would like to review the concepts that we have previously learned on lecture 17 when we started talking about the shear stress in beams. So I will get back to lecture 17. On the very beginning part of lecture 17, we talked about this problem. You remember that? We had this shape. We tried to figure out how much is the value of shear stress developed at the connection of these two. The way we solved that problem was we tried to determine how much is the total force acting on the right part of that and determine how much is the total force acting on the left of that. Then we determined how much is the balancing force acting on the side of that section. The side, because that part connects the, this shape to the rest of the segment. All right? We determine the balancing force, and then by dividing this balancing force by the area, we determine how much is the shear stress developed in that segment. Also, we have learned that there is one easier equation to determine that balancing force, which we call that delta F. Delta F is delta M Q over I. Delta M is the change in the moment from the left to the right. Q is the first moment of area of that subsegment, and I is the moment of inertia. I ask you to solve this problem for, again, before coming to class, to review this concept. We would like to start from that point. So I would like to consider one shape again like that. I change the dimension. But another important change that I will make here is instead of assuming that these two segments, segment number one and two, are fully connected to the web element, I use bolt to connect these two pieces together. So that is the difference that we have here. Now let me get back to lecture 19 and talk about this problem. So as you can see in this problem, the shape of the section is very similar to what we had before. The only difference is we used bolts to connect this to the web. All right? We want to see how much is the value of shear stress developed in the bolt. In that case, we cannot use VQ over IT for determining the shear stress. Why? Why I can't use VQ over IT? Look at the longitudinal direction of the beam. The bolts are not continuous along the longitudinal direction. They are discontinuous. They are connecting these two pieces together on intervals. Okay? I assume that spacing between the bolt is S. The equation that we previously developed assumed that these two pieces are fully connected together by glue, or they are made from one shape. But here, this is not the case. For this problem, which we call them built-up members, we need to develop another equation to see how much is the stress developed in those <laughs> bolts, or a screw, or nails. Generally, we call them fasteners. So we are looking for an equation to determine how much is the stress developed in those fasteners. Before presenting that equation, I would like to solve this problem. To understand the concept, then I will provide you with algorithm on how to solve these kind of problems in general. All right, let's see what we have here. A beam is fabricated by bolting together three wood members as shown in the figure. So we have these three pieces. Um, and we made a beam. The beam is considered to be simply supported on both ends and is subjected to one, ax one uh, concentrated force at the middle. The magnitude of that force is 17 kips, and the bolt spacing is 4 inch. The dimension of the section is provided here. We are looking for two parameters. In part A, we assume that spacing between the bolt is 4 inch, and each bolt has a diameter of 3 quarter of inch. And we want to see how much is the value of shear stress developed in the bolt. In the second part, we assume that the maximum shear stress in the bolt is limited to 5 KSI, and we want to see how much would be the appropriate spacing between the bolt. So two different sort of questions. I will solve the first part. 
and I will ask you to solve the second part of that. All right? The first step is determining how much is the value of shear force in that beam. To determine that, we need to determine how much is the reaction. So the beam is symmetric, and each restraint gets half of the force. And to draw the shear diagram, we start from the left side. It goes up by the value of the reaction. It remains constant from that point to the middle, because there is not any distributed load acting on that part. There would be a jump equal to P going downward at the middle. And again, it remains constant until reaching to the right point where the shear force gets zero. Okay? So this is how shear diagram looks like. The maximum shear force developed in this beam is P over 2. So shear force would be 17 over 2, which is equal to 8.5 kips. We have determined how much is the shear force. In the second step, we determine section properties. Section properties means location of centroid and the moment of inertia. The location of centroid for that section and the moment of inertia is calculated using the SIGPRO app. So to save time, I just <coughs> write down the values. Y bar is 3.32 inch from top surface of that section, and I is 195.88 inch to the fourth. Now, we need to determine the moment of area. For determining Q or moment of area, we need to answer this question. What part of the section is connected by that bolt to the rest of the section? Look at this shape. This shape has three subsections. What part of that is connected to the rest by that bolt? I can consider two parts on the sides are connected to the middle part by that bolt. Okay, to make it easier, I will consider just one part of that, as I did before for the, previous, the, the problem that we discussed on lecture number 17. Okay, we can consider both sections, but to, be, to follow the same procedure as we had before, I'm going to consider just one part of that. So let's consider the right part. So Q would be calculated for that part. The equation for Q is area times distance. Area would be the area of, of this uh, brown shape. And D is distance of its centroid to the centroid of the entire section. So the location of centroid is 3.32 below the top surface of this beam. And the location of centroid of this subsection would be on half of its height. The height of that is 4 inch. So the location of that centroid would be 2 inch from top. That means that the distance between these two centroids would be 1.32. Now, I can calculate Q. Q would be area times D. Area is 2 times 4, and D is 1.32, and that gives me Q equal to 10.56. Now, we want to determine how much is the shear flow. What is shear flow? Let's ignore shear flow. Let's determine how much is that balancing force, or delta F, in that section, okay? Let's take out a length of that beam, a part of that beam, with the length of delta X, as shown in that figure, and we want to determine how much is that delta F. We have learned in lecture number 17 that the value of the balancing force would be equal to delta M Q over I. I would like to define a new parameter. We call that Q, that is small letter Q. And that would be delta F over delta X. In other words, this parameter is the balancing force in the unit length of a beam. So instead of defining the balancing force in delta X, I will determine that in the unit length of that beam. Okay? Now, we call this as shear flow. So shear flow is the balancing force in the unit length of the beam. All right, now let me plug delta F into that, into that equation. Q would be delta MQ over delta XI. And we know that delta M over delta X is shear force. Then we can simplify this equation into this form. Q would be VQ over I. All right, so shear flow is calculated from this equation. 
This shear flow is something that I have introduced in lecture number 18. I just wanted to remind you again how we are calculating that shear flow. Now let me plug the values and calculate shear flow numerically in this problem. Um, v was 8.5 kips, Q was 10.56, and I was this one. And that gives me shear flow equal to 0.458 kips over inch. It means that in one inch of that beam, there would be balancing force of 0.458 kips. That should be transferred from that segment to the web. Now pay attention carefully. In this case, these two pieces are not connected together by glue. What is responsible for transferring that shear flow from that segment on right to the rest of the segment, to the web? Fasteners. The fasteners are responsible for transferring that load. Now, based on that, we can determine how much is the, sh the shear force in each fastener. Let's do that in step number five. We want to determine how much is the shear force in each bolt. Again, I will take out a unit length of that beam, and I know that spacing between the bolt is S. Now let's determine how much is the shear force in each of these bolts, in each of these fasteners. We call that V sub pen. We know that the total force that should be transferred in the unit length is Q. Okay? How many fasteners do we have here? Let's call that the number of fasteners in the unit length. In that case, the shear force that should be transferred by each pen would be Q divided by the number of fasteners that we have in one unit length. Let's write it down parametrically. Shear flow is Q, but how many fasteners do we have in the unit length? How can we calculate the number of fasteners in the unit length if the spacing between them is S? Let's talk about that numerically. Consider this uh, part of this table, which is one meter, okay? Can I use this pen? So these are bolts that we have. Spacing between the bolt is, say, 10 centimeter or 0.1 meter. How many bolts in total do we have in one meter? 10. How did you get that? You divided the unit length by the spacing between the bolts. So we do the same here. So the number of fasteners in the unit length would be unit length divided by fastener spacing, or 1 over s. Let me plug that back into that equation. And now I can get this equation for v pen. v pen would be q s. q is shear flow, and s is spacing between the bolts. Let's calculate that numerically. V pen in this case would be Q times S. Q is 0.458 and S is 4 inch. And that gives me V pen equal to 1.834 kips. In other words, each pen is responsible for transferring 1.834 kips of force. How can we determine the value of shear stress in each bolt? The value of shear force in each bolt is V pen. The area of each bolt, let's consider that as A pen. How much is the shear stress developed in that segment? That would be shear force divided by cross-section area. The cross-section area would be pi, diameter of the pen squared over 4. And in that case, the diameter is 3 quarter of inch. And if I plug the values, that gives me 0.442 squared inch. And the value of shear stress is V pen divided by area of one pen. I can divide the value of shear force by the area, and that would be the answer of this problem. So the value of shear stress in each bolt would be 4.15 KSI. <coughs> that is the answer of the first part. Does that make sense? Now let me ask you another question. What would be the case in that section, instead of having one bolt, we have two bolts to connect these two shapes together. So let's talk about that in steps. Is there any change in step number one? No. Step number two? No. Step number three? No. Step number four? No. There's not any change in step number four because the total force that should be transferred depends on the area of that segment. And we don't change the area of that segment. So nothing changes in that step. 
Is there any change in step number five? Yes. What part of that changes? So in that case, because the number of fasteners that we have in this, is there any change in the number of fasteners when you look at that, say, from this side? Spacing would be the same. So the unit <coughs> length divided by spacing gives you the same number. But we know that in one section, we see two bolts. So to make this equation more accurate, I would like to introduce a new parameter here. I will use another color for that to separate it from what we had before, and I will call that as M. M actually shows the number of fasteners that we have in one section which connects that piece to the rest of the section. Does that make sense? In the problem that we solved, M was <coughs> 1. But we might use more than one pen or bolt to connect that piece to the rest of the section. So the general equation that we need to develop here is this one. Does that make sense? Or let me give you another example. Consider the case where the bolt is subjected to double shear connection. You see one bolt, but that bolt is sheared twice. So here, M reflects that part. So M actually reflects the number of bolts and the way that the bolt is sheared. If it's double sheared, we multiply that by two to reflect the correct number of areas that are subjected to shear. Okay, now you get back to part B and determine how much is the spacing between the bolts if the value of shear stress is limited to 5 KSI. Let me quickly go over that and tell you how we can solve that. Now in this case, the spacing between the bolt is not known. It is not 4 inch anymore. We are looking for how much is that. But the value of shear stress in the bolt is 5 KSI, the maximum shear stress in that bolt. Is there any change in step number one? Step number two? Step number three? So nothing changes up to step number three. Is there any change in step number four? No, nothing changes. Is there any change in step number five? So here, S is unknown. M is 1. We don't change the number of volts. Q is known. What about V pen? Do we know how much is that? If we get back to step number 6, based on the given shear stress, we can determine how much is V pen. So we need to kind of reverse the solution of that problem. Okay, go ahead and tell me how much is the spacing required in that case.